It's relatively easy to calculate heats of evaporation using HP diagrams as, the, as we have here. In this example, we are asked to calculate how much energy is required to evaporate 10 kilograms of N-butane at 4.5 atmosphere. And we're given a uh, enthalpy pressure diagram uh, to read that off of. So the first thing to realize is that this energy to, to require to evaporate this 10 kilograms of N-butane is effectively the heat of evaporation um, multiplied by the amount of substance that we are evaporating. And it's strongly implied by the way that this uh, problem is worded that we will be starting with a saturated liquid and evaporate all of that to a saturated vapor all at this pressure of 4.5 uh, atmospheres. So if we draw a line going through 4.5 atmospheres, uh, we are interested in this point and this point. And so we can read off uh, the enthalpy of a saturated liquid over here and the enthalpy of a saturated vapor over here. And so this distance is effectively the heat of evaporation of the N-butane at, uh, at this pressure. We can also see the temperature that uh, is spoken about here is the 120 degree uh, Fahrenheit isotherm that goes exactly through the point at the saturated vapor and in terms of the uh, specific volume we can see that uh, we're going to want the these isocores which correspond to the uh, 1.25 and 1.5 isocores, I would read that as roughly halfway uh, between the two uh, as where that, that uh, point ended up. Now we're ready to do the calculation. Let's move this diagram up so that we can have some space. I've included the values that we've read off for the specific volume and the temperature, as well as the specific enthalpy of the liquid and the gas. Now, an important thing to note is that these numbers are relatively approximate. I haven't been incredibly exact in reading off. I've said, okay, that looks about halfway between 40 and 60, and this looks about that, or that much into uh, between uh, 80 and 200. Uh, students commonly wonder about the accuracy of these tables. Um, the tables are pretty accurate, and if you are very careful, you can probably get a good value. But um, reading off a table is, or the reading off a graph like this is always going to be uh, a, a, an error-prone activity. Um, even the curves that are drawn here uh, will probably not interpolate exactly on experimental data. So there's always a bit of an error. I wouldn't trust these tables to be more accurate than about uh, maybe 5%. Uh, so don't worry too much if you're making errors um, or whether you are making errors uh, in reading this. In most cases, it's more important to get a, a good ballpark value than uh, to really fret about the exact details. So once we realize that the uh, enthalpy that will be required to take a substance from saturated liquid to saturated vapor will be the difference between the uh, enthalpy of that liquid and the enthalpy of that vapor, and we have a name for that, this, uh, this heat of evaporation, we realize that the total energy required to evaporate 10 kilograms will simply be the mass times the heat of evaporation. So we're uh, a very simple sum away from the final answer, along with some unit conversions. So here are the numbers, uh, short the uh, unit conversion. And in fact, we can simply type into uh, a tool like uh, Wolfram Alpha that will allow us to type 
the query directly into Wolfram Alpha like this. So we simply uh, substitute the multiplication over there and we ask for the result in kilojoules and Wolfram Alpha will uh, immediately spit out the result. 3373 kilojoules. And there we go, problem solved. Once you know how these tables work, it becomes relatively easy to uh, obtain the results that you're looking for directly from uh, the graph.